First, I'll start with a disclaimer. What you're about to hear might be dangerous. I think there's some risk involved for you and for me in what I'm about to share with you. The risk for me is pretty simple. It's the risk of not spending my time well here on stage and having you ignore or reject what I'm going to say. The danger for you is that you actually follow some of my guidance. I suspect you'll take on a little more loss and harm in your life if you listen to what I have to say. The danger for all of us is that you won't listen to what I have to say and all of us will suffer for it. I'm asking you to take on more risk. Please take on more thoughtful risk. Why would I encourage you to take on the possibility of more loss and harm? In my experience with students, the students that were bold enough to take on more thoughtful risk in pursuit of their goals and objectives were more capable and happier. They were able to create novel solutions to complex problems. I should mention that novel does not mean better. Some of these solutions were actually inferior, but they were new, which is intriguing and interesting to me. Why would you want new solutions that are inferior? Well, if you believe, like I do, that we live in a complex world and there are new, difficult, complex problems emerging, then we'll need new solutions to face those new problems. Old solutions are clearly insufficient, otherwise the new problems would not have emerged. What does taking on risk for these students look like? Sometimes it's trying out for the school play and not becoming a part of the cast. Sometimes it's taking a class that's interesting to them, even though they're not sure they're going to get an A. Trying out for the sports team and making the team, but sitting on the bench all season. These are examples of risk that these students have taken on. Sometimes they succeed. Sometimes they have novel forms of small failure. And in general, the students that have dealt with it best have gone on to be successful. Somewhat disappointed, a few scars, but at the end of the day, they realize to have true agency in this world, you need to learn new skills and pick up new knowledge so that you can solve complex problems, foster meaningful relationships, and possibly create new things that are enjoyed by others or even just enjoyed by themselves. It's easy for me to ask you to take on more risk, but it's going to be very hard. You've got a difficult road ahead of you. And why is that? Well, it turns out that despite the fact that when we're younger and we're learning machines and we're happy to explore and take on risk, here we have a little person exploring gravity, learning about gravity, at the playground, mind you. You can learn about gravity from textbooks, but sometimes it's best to go to the playground. When you go to these settings, you will occasionally hear people say, stop, be careful, that's dangerous. And while safety is of the utmost concern, when there actually isn't impending doom, stop, be careful, that's dangerous, sounds more like stop, don't be curious, don't learn. So I hope that she's going to stay curious and she's going to keep learning. But as I've already alluded to, the world is kind of allied against her. There are explicit and implicit considerations that are going to inhibit her from being as curious as she could be. So the world, again, tries to tell us what is safe and what is not safe. Um, think playground, stop, that's dangerous, be careful. The irony here is the perception of safety is actually the breeding ground of truly tragic outcomes. Think subprime mortgages. So it, it turns out that um, a kind of cute example of this is the uh, four-stop intersection. The Department of Transportation of Ohio tells us that there are certain intersections that have stop signs that are actually pretty dangerous, and they're dangerous because of the stop signs. Why, why might that be the case? It turns out that some motorists speed in between intersections to recoup the time lost stopping at the intersection. Some drivers will actually take alternate paths to avoid the intersection, and these alternate paths might actually be more dangerous. Some drivers just speed through the intersection, assuming that others have actually stopped at the stop signs. So it turns out that you can actually have a safer environment, some intersections, where you just remove the stop signs. 
Why might this be the case? Without the stop signs, you probably engage in very attentive behavior. And attentive behavior is strongly correlated to learning. When you realize that you are actually responsible for your own safety and your own learning and your own outcomes, you might actually have superior outcomes. Again, it's going to be difficult for all of us, any of us, to do what's right, because to do so, we're going to have to be independent thinkers, and we're going to have to realize that some of the advice we receive regarding what's safe and what isn't safe is actually wrong or inverted. Another reason it might be difficult for you to take on more risk is because you're kind of busy. We're all busy, um, and when presented with a problem to be solved, you might actually just try to take the straight line solution to the end of the puzzle. Yeah, a simple maze like this, for example. And you actually don't have the time to explore the nooks and crannies off the beaten path, which is actually equivalent to saying you don't have the time for serendipitous discovery, which is going to be a tragedy for all of us. When you're exploring the simple path through this maze, there's only one solution. And doing this simple path, doing this one solution through the maze, actually teaches you very little about how to solve other problems you might encounter. The other interesting thing about a maze is, no matter how twisty and turny it is, it's still just a simple maze. And by simple, I don't mean that it's easily solved. It could be a difficult but simple maze. Simple means that at the beginning of the problem, the components of the problem are relatively static, they're easily articulated, and you can probably imagine the form of the solution. You might actually even be able to give someone detailed directions or a computer program that can solve this simple problem, which has one single, not novel, maybe boring solution. Do you think your life is simple? Do you think you occupy a world that is simple and has only simple problems? Probably not. You might think that your life is complicated or that the world is complicated. A complicated puzzle is one that has many parts, they're interconnected. Maybe the parts move around in relation to each other. And you might be tempted to believe that you have a complicated life, but the reality is a complicated puzzle is really actually just a very difficult, simple puzzle. Because again, there's just a single solution. And despite the fact that the parts are interconnected and move, they move in well-defined patterns relative to each other. And you could probably write a set of directions or a computer program that could solve this complicated puzzle. I would argue that the world you inhabit and your life is neither simple nor complicated. It's probably complex. What is a complex problem? A complex problem is one that has many parts, they're interconnected, they're coupled to each other, and the components of the system might be autonomous. You might be an autonomous part of the complex world, and when these parts make decisions, they influence the decisions of other members of the system, somewhat like a flock of birds trying to achieve coherent flight. Each bird is autonomous, each bird makes its own decision, and each bird influences the decision of the other birds in the flock. This is complex. If you enter a complex problem with a well thought out, a detailed and rigid plan, you are likely to fail because the problem is adaptive and changes while you're working on it. But the good news is, a complex problem has multiple solutions. So there is no one perfect answer. Perfection is not required, and sometimes good enough is good enough. And these, of these solutions, many of them are novel, and as of today, unknown. There's a lot of possibility out there to find the right solution to these complex problems. So, I hope you can tell from this video, these birds trying to achieve coherent flight, each member of the system is autonomous, and somehow they do achieve coherent flight. There's no way that they know what the answer should be before they start, and I don't think detailed directions will get them to the right answer. And despite the fact that this video, the choreography in this video is mesmerizing, I, I love watching it, the interesting thing for me is this individual. What is he doing? 
Did he have a rigid plan and was not willing to adapt to the system that he was in? It's possible. What, what is also possible is he actually saw danger or risk that the group did not see or could not see or willfully ignored, which happens from time to time. So I'm, I'm cheering for this little guy to go on to be a hero of the group because if he goes off on his own, he might serendipitously discover something that rescues or saves the day. But as I've already alluded to, he has a tough fight ahead of him because there's an institutional imperative that rewards preservation of the status quo. When you operate in the world, there are essentially two modes of action you can adopt. You can do what's known, follow typical strategies and tactics, or you can try something new. And as I've alluded to, new is not always better. New is new. New is different. But if you follow the status quo, you could be successful or have failure. You know, if you're successful when you follow the directions, mandated directions, you know, you'll probably uh, be applauded. Feels good. Uh, you'll probably get the typical raise, and you might be eventually promoted. These are nice things. If you fail following the status quo, probably no applause. But guess what? The organization can be quite forgiving. You might get the typical raise, and you might eventually be promoted. The irony here is that organizations are very forgiving if you fail using traditional methods. You can always say, I did what I was told to do. I did what was expected of me. The risk here is actually for the organization because any organization that supports and allows failure of this type long term is doomed. The individual is safe in the interim. Once the organization collapses, the individual will go down with the organization as well. Probably you've experienced novel failure and you've been conditioned to avoid it. If you do something you were not told to do and you fail, tough questions will be asked. You will not be applauded, you will not be rewarded, and sometimes you will be fired. But in this simple two by two matrix, it should be obvious that the only way you can get the stunning, novel, unanticipated victory of novel success is to try new things, to hang out in novel space. And I'm not going to uh, deny the fact that if you hang out in novel space, you will occasionally encounter novel failure. But it's the price that we all collectively should be willing to pay. Because what we have here is an inverse tragedy of the commons. In the typical tragedy of the commons, the individual takes on self-serving behavior, which might actually be bad for the collective long term. Think resource utilization. I'll take more of that, even if we eventually run out together. However, in the inverse tragedy of the commons, the individual avoids self-harm, even though to do so might deny the collective that stunning victory that is required for all of us to succeed together. So I hope I've done a good job of getting you to understand that I believe we live in a complex world. The interconnected nature of all of us together, especially enabled through technology, means that when you do something, when you make a decision, when you take an action, you influence the decisions and actions of others on this planet. I hope you realize that there are emergent problems in the world that will not be solved with old solutions. They will be solved with new solutions. And to get to those new solutions will require some risk. It will require us being comfortable, us being you being comfortable, and the collective being comfortable with novel failure. To operate in that space, you're going to have to think independently so you can decide for yourself what is safe and what is not safe. You're going to have to explore the part of the world off the beaten path so that you can engage in serendipitous discovery, which is a wonderful thing, something unexpected but good. And you're going to have to overcome the institutional imperative that tells us it's better to fail safely than to fail using some novel method. I hope you understand that for all of us together, it'll be better if you take on this challenge and take on more risk. Thank you.